You know, I, I got I got to ask you this, and I'm sure you've been asked this before. Yeah. And this is this is uh, getting getting back to your music career. Yeah. Where, where was you? We spoke about Puff earlier mm -hmm. in the conversation. Friend of yours, you watched his career. Intern, going to to president of Uptown Records, starting his own label. Yep. Where were you the first time that you heard Notorious B.I.G., Unbelievable, and that famous quote? Your I was rhymes about, you know, go, go ahead. I was in my living room. Somebody sent it to me. Somebody it wasn't on the radio. No, no, no. I heard it way before that. Somebody sent it to me, and then remember, were you there when they did the Big Mac thing? Absolutely. Yeah. So I got that. That's mind you, one of the greatest promotional items I've ever seen. Insane. In my life. So you know, you had the big the the the, the buns and the fake letters, yeah. and then the tape was in the middle. So it was on the tape. I still have it. I have all that. So I still have that. Um, and um. So I heard an unmixed version, then I heard the record version. Um, yeah, it was that's that's when I heard it. So, um, but you let me ask you a question. So mm -hmm. you you being up there, you just knowing my stuff or whatever. What did you think when you heard it? Okay, I'm an intern at this time, mind you. Mm -hmm. I'm bottom of the barrel. Um. I don't know that I keyed in on that verse in particular. I just thought the song Unbelievable was amazing. Yeah. And that was one of those quotables. Yeah. And to see where that line, that record, that verse had gone, I thought, and, and you're talking to somebody who I still put to this minute, to this hour, big is in my top three. Yeah. MCs of all time. Yeah. If not number one. Um, Jay Z probably took his spot. Maybe he Jay is one biggest two for me. Yeah. I just thought it was one of the hardest lyrics. I'm like, yo, this dude is amazing. I I I was so. Um, it's one thing to work around great talent like that, mm -hmm. but I I thought bar for bar, this dude was just amazing, and that was just one more lyric in the song. Yeah, I just thought I thought. Um, I thought the song was, I still think the song is dope. I don't, you know, just as an MC, I just, you know, I thought, you know, dude is super nice. I think, and I thought that, you know, the album was full of those type of quotables. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so for me, I didn't take it anywhere further than that. Um, I think that um, I think other people may have just you know just outsiders looking in, but for me it was just like you know I saw the missile coming, <laughs> saw the missile coming before it was even launched. So so um, yeah. Okay, so so I gotta ask you: did, did you ever have a chance to to either sit with Big, bump into him in the club, um? Or even Puff, for that matter, and have a conversation. I never talked to Puff about it. No, I think Puff Puff came to me. I don't know what club we were in. Puff said something to me about it, but it was like some random. It wasn't. I can't even remember. Um. But with big, like I said, people tried to make it more than what it was to me. When you say and, that, what do you mean exactly? So, for example, you know, it it became the the. So, what are you going to say to Big? What, what about Big? What are you going to do about it? And it's like, all right, yo, dude, there's a line. Um, it's not a record. It's a it's a damn line. And at that time, I was on a downswing. You know, right. I didn't have I didn't have a deal. You know, it wasn't like you can make a response and put it on the radio in the next minute. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have those resources. So, so um, by nature, I'm just a jokey kind of guy. So anytime somebody would ask me about it, I would crack a joke. I don't know what the jokes were, but I'm cracking jokes. I'm just, I'm making light of the subject. Um, and 
And I remember one time we were in a club and I, I did have a record out. It was coming out at the time. And I was in a club. It was, um, what was that club? Mad Wednesdays. Oh, the Maria, Maria, Maria Davis. Davis. Yeah, Maria yeah, Davis. So, so we were all in there and I just remember it being like Maria and some other people were just trying to make it bigger than what it was. And they got on the mic like, big, you in here? Quam, you in here? Y'all need to settle it right now. Y'all need to get this thing over with, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, settle what? That sound like Maria, boy. You know, yeah. and I'm like, you know, and then, and <laughs> here come Biggie. So he comes up to me rolling the biggest blunt I've ever seen in my life. Look like a microphone. <laughs> just... And he was like, yeah, I heard them, heard them fucking jokes. She was cracking on me. And I'm, and I'm sitting there, I'm still joking. I'm like, what you expect me to do? Blah, blah, blah. And, and if anybody could understand like the size ratio, it's like Spider-Man versus the Hulk. Exactly. Incredible so, Hulk to somebody. Yeah. So like, he's a thousand times bigger than me. And it's so funny because I had two dudes with me, right? And Big had like C's and he had a crew with him. I only had two dudes. And we were in suits, <laughs> back to the suits. And I know like me and him, were, me and Big were trading, we weren't like necessarily beefing, but we were just going back and forth. And I saw his guys coming, right? And mind you, I knew half of them because I I I spent a lot of time in his area of Brooklyn, so I knew a lot of a lot of people. So it was no like I wasn't that wasn't feeling a threat or anything. But the funny thing was, as me and this guy's talking, I turn around and the two dudes with me is doing the moonwalk out the out the back. <laughs> I'm like. I told I was saying the big like hold on hold on, and I turned around y'all punk ass like you know what I'm saying it wasn't even that kind of situation but that was the only the only um and then on top of that Maria thinks that we are physically beefing and then kicks us out I'm like you kick us out from a situation kick, who out? kick both both groups yeah it kicked us out. They made me leave through the back. They made him leave through the front. And we both sitting there like, yo, what, what just happened? So that was the only, that was the only anything. You know what I'm saying? It was, you know, but to this day, like all surrounding parties, I'm like super cool with it. It's never, it was never no. You want to know something? You, you asked me earlier, what did I think? And, and, and I don't know that I heard understood where you were going but hearing this story i'm gonna tell you and, and i'm gonna tell you number one as somebody who was there number two as a hip-hop i never took it as a diss track or, yeah, or yeah. Shot. i took it as a dope lyric yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize that being in your skin living life and seeing life through your vernacular people were coming at you like y'all got beef yeah, yeah, no, treat people literally treated it like we had, we had like, like a pure issue. And I'm like, I don't even, like, for example, just to show you how deep everybody goes. Gooch, Mark Pitts, right? Mm -hmm. My right hand man, Al, and Mark are classmates from the fifth grade. So I know Mark from since I'm like 14. <laughs> I know Puff since I'm like 17. You know what I'm saying? These are two direct connections. You know, of course I know Mr. C, you know, and other just random parties around. So it's like, there's no beef. I know Clark Kent, there's no beef. These are people that I personally know. 
And it's probably one of them that sent me the tape. You know what I'm saying? Now I think about it, it wasn't like, I can't remember who sent me the tape. But, so, for me, I'm like, everything is gravy. I mean, it's just, it's just a line. But I think Biggie ushered in a new era of hip hop. And that new era did not coincide with the era I was from. You understand? Two different mm. things. It didn't coincide. So anybody attaching themselves to the new era takes those lines as gospel. And when they see anybody based on those lines, they take it as gospel. You played out because he said you played out. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, um, it is that, you know, it is what it is on that thing. It's like, I'm not hurt over it or anything like that, but it's, it's, that's, you know, that's we, the, talking, the truth of the matter is it's 1994, 1995. When that yeah. record dropped, you clearly were, were without a deal on the downslope of, of your rap career hasn't yes necessarily blossomed to where you went on the production side. Yeah. yeah. You know, huge hits that you produce for artists. So I, you know, it's it's so interesting because I'm telling you, I never looked at it as anything more than another hot bar. Because you because you and 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 I think the only reason why I'm I usually don't even try to address it anymore because it's like 30 years ago, but I'm addressing it with you because you were there. Um, but you got to think of the random kid in Newark or the random kid in Bed-Stuy or the random kid in, in Connecticut or whatever it is. Um, they don't see it that way. They see it as a declaration. Like I'll give you another example. Not even me. It was when... G Unit versus Ja Rule, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember doing this. That's beef, by the way. Yeah, but no, that's that's beef. But the random kid can't understand that beef, right? So picture this: we're doing a. Um, I was a part of this organization, like this kids empowerment organization. And this is like the height of G Unit and the height of Ja Rule. And um, we do this high school in Union, New Jersey. And Ja Rule is the guest speaker. And he comes to the school and to talk to kids and uplift the kids and, you know, be a celebrity guest. The kids take it that because 50 Cent is 50 is the hot dude now. They all organize and every kid puts on a G unit t-shirt. So when Ja Rule shows up, mm. all he sees is G unit. And he pulls up in a Maybach, all the kids just throwing snowballs at the Maybach. He goes into the high school, he's still being a trooper about it. Mind you, I saw the kids before he showed up and they were excited to see him. But the mandate was, nah, it's G unit. So he throws on, they all throw on these t-shirts and all the kids that are in the assembly, he gets on stage and they're like, G, 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 you know, you know, and the principal has to come outside, come on the stage and tell them they, they don't take off the shirts immediately. They're suspended. And that shows you that's the power of, of influence. Because those kids in Union, New Jersey have nothing to do with those two men's beef. Correct. You know what I'm saying? And so, and so you, you, you have the influence of these kids and, you know, so you trickle it back a couple of years and the same thing happens with me, you know, so in, in a way, you know, I don't think, I never showed up to a school and everybody had on 
Biggie shirts and threw snowballs at me, but you know what I'm saying. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.